Welcome to head coach Jeremy Pruitt's Monday press conference. Coach will start us off with a quick opening statement. Please raise your hands for questions. You know, when you look at um, Florida this week, um, first of all, there's a lot of familiarity with the coaching staff there. I've coached against Dan for a long time and very familiar, familiar with Todd Grantham. Chris, Christian Robinson was a GA for us at Georgia. Um, you look at them, they're very well coached. Start with offensively. Uh, they, they are replacing some guys up front offensively, but they're doing a really nice job. Um, you know, lost their quarterback probably this past week, but um, the backup come in there and done a really, really fine job and probably be expected a guy that's uh, been in the program for a while there, a lot of maturity. Um, these guys have really good skill players uh, from tight ends to running backs to wide receivers. Uh, they spread the ball around. Um, they'll hit you with RPOs. Uh, they're, they're really stubborn when it comes to running the football. Um, they've always done a very nice job running the football, being creative in how they do it. And, and they've, now they've got really good playmakers at wide receiver so they can get the ball out there and they can hurt you with runs after the catch, screens, or, or throw the ball down the field. Um, defensively, um, you know, Todd uh, continues to do a really good job, uh, very multiple uh, up front. Uh, they're leading the country in sacks. Uh, you know, we're playing really well in the red area. Uh, it's not surprising. They got really good players at all three levels, got experience, they got depth. Um, so, and then we look at them in the kicking game. Freddie Swain is a, um, is a kick returner, uh, probably got the, the um, with their punter and, and uh, field goal kicker the, and kickoff guy, um, probably as good a combination as anybody in the, in the conference. Got really good speed to play on teams. Uh, so. We, we, we will definitely have our hands full. With that, I'll take any questions. Steve, David, Blake. Just from what you've been able to see, how are they different without Franks, with Trask and they're at quarterback from what you were able to see on film? And are you preparing for the likelihood of them maybe using two quarterbacks Saturday? I mean, they just ran, they ran their, their offense. Uh, same plays, nothing different. Uh, Might have even executed better, you know. Uh, obviously, they scored more points there in a short period of time, but uh, as a guy that uh, competed for the quarterback job, uh, very talented, um, and, and has experience. David and Blake. Uh, General, what went into starting Kenneth over Alante on Saturday, and, and what do you foresee in that situation moving forward? Well, we're just playing the guys who practice the best week in and week out. So, um, you know, Kenneth practiced uh, really good last week, and uh, – you know, whoever who practices the best this week will play this week. Hey, Jeremy, will uh, Bryce travel to Gainesville for that game? And then also, um, just what can what can you guys do on offense maybe to neutralize some of their, their pass rush you were talking about? Well, um, first thing is we, we need to be able to run the football. Uh, if you can run the football and stay out of uh, – Stay, stay ahead of the sticks a little bit uh, so they can't pin their ears back and go. So we got to be able to run the football. we got to be creative uh, probably with, with different things and protections, uh, you know, um, whether we're chipping or leaving the back end or uh, something like that. Um, and, and we've got to be efficient offensively. got to get the ball out of our hand, know where we're going with the ball, uh, and spread it around. Will Bryce travel for the game? I've not decided that. Coach, Trey's a guy that hadn't had a lot of contact uh, in fall camp. Now three games in, kind of where's he at and, and where you thought he would be and, and what's he doing well for you guys? You know, Trey's playing really hard. Um, you know, kind of the way we, we've kind of altered practice a little bit to help his development. Uh, so being really light on Mondays and Thursdays um, and then on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, um, you know, he doesn't participate. So. Um, but, you know, just like anybody that, that's not getting to practice, he makes some mistakes out there. But the guy's playing hard, uh, you know, um, and, and continues to improve each week. Coach, after watching the film, what, how did you evaluate what you got from the offensive line with putting K. Ron in it, at tackle and, and sliding Darnell inside the guard? You know, we're going to the right folks. Uh, we, might, we might not be taking the right path to get there, so to speak. So there's lots of things. Uh, technically that we need to clean up. Um, but the positive is there's very few mental errors. Patrick, 
Jeremy, how would you kind of evaluate where you guys are on, on the defensive line uh, through three games, and what have you seen that you liked, and, and where do you want to see moving forward as you get into conference play? You know, I think Aubrey Solomon's played really well. Um, the rest of the guys, you could kind of put them in a group there. Uh, and, you know, there's not much difference in them. We've really got to continue to improve up front, and we will. Uh, you know, there's most of those guys have very little playing experience. Uh, so, and if you look at them, a lot of the guys that we're playing, you know, we're not even here during the spring. So, uh, they're going to continue to improve, and they've got to improve, uh, you know, to, to – kind of reestablish the line of scrimmage a little bit. Uh, we've got to be better in pass rush, got to get more push up the middle. Um, you know, so we just got to continue to work hard at that position. Coach, uh, Tennessee in the first three games of the season came to the game as favorites, but against Florida, you guys are underdogs. Did it feel like it changed the mentality? How do you feel like you guys are not being the favorites, being the underdogs, as I say, coming to the Florida game? Well, it didn't help us those first two games, did it? So um, I don't think that's got much bearing on the game. Uh, you know, we've got to, we've got to go out there and, and uh, play good football, clean football, play hard, play tough, uh, be relentless play for four quarters uh, and we got to practice that create the right habits during the week Weston and Jesse. Jimmy how would you evaluate the way Daryl Taylor's played to this point in the season and, and how important will it be to get some more guys emerging on that other side kind of as a bookend to maybe take some some pressure and double teams and chips away from him yeah, I, I think Daryl can play better. Uh, you know, unfortunately, he had a little bit of an injury during fall camp that um, really has been going on since July. So he had a lot of um, – he didn't get to practice as much as we would have liked to have practiced him. Uh, but he's getting healthier and healthier. So, um, you know, he's a, he's a guy that can be a really good player, and, and he needs to do that all the time. Uh, you know, so he's improved every game, and I and I expect him to continue to do that. Jesse, then Marshall. Jeremy, for a guy who didn't start in high school and you have very little game tape on for Kyle Trask, do you go into a game like this just preparing as if Felipe was the quarterback? Is that how you kind of have to take with just minimal film on the guy who will actually be back there? Well, I think last year, um, that one time for them, it was close enough that there was a quarterback battle you know, talking about who's going to be the starter, even into the season. So, uh, Sky's plenty capable. Saw it other night. Um, you know, very efficient in what they did. Uh, they didn't really change much of who they are. Uh, the guy's plenty capable. He's a big, strong guy that's got a good arm, and uh, he's physical in the run game. Marshall. Jeremy, with uh, Tennessee playing 17 17- uh, freshman so far through these first three games, going on the road now for the first time and into SEC play. What will be the message for those guys, you know, playing on the road and playing against league play for the first time? Well, uh, it's about execution, uh, knowing what to do, how to do it, and why it's important to do it that way, getting prepared throughout the week. Um, you create the right habits during the week. Um, and, you know, our guys are, to me, it's fun going on the road. I like going on the road. You find out who you are. Uh, everybody's against you. Uh, you you kind of see a little bit about your character, and um, it'll be good for us. Corey and David. Coach, obviously, you know, it's different circumstances from last year, but how much do you think you guys are going to lean on the experience of being in, you know, playing Florida last year and how that game went down in your preparation for this week? Well, I hope we learned a lesson that if you turn the ball over six times, it's hard to win. Uh, you know, so, you know, last year's game will have no bearing on this year's game. So, um, we've got to get our guys we, – we, we'll have a good plan. Uh, we've got to get our guys ready to execute the plan, play the right way, uh, and do it for 60 minutes. David and Brent. Uh, Jeremy, how would you describe the difference in your defense with Daniel out there uh, versus when he hasn't been the first couple games? You know, Daniel's a guy that um, – you know, we've got, we have a lot of time invested in him, uh, starting with last spring, uh, two springs now, uh, two fall camps. So, you know, that, that's when you, when you come into a program and you spend that much time with guys to develop them, uh, to get them ready to play, and then they can't play, um, 
you know, there's a difference, right? Willie Ignatz really he he don't really play the money position, but he had to play money for us. Okay, uh, that's why we moved Jeremy Banks over there just to create some more depth. Um, but you know, it, it's obvious that he has some experience there playing, uh, whether it was with us or before us. Uh, the game slows down a little bit uh, and probably takes a little bit of pressure off the other guys as far as making calls and adjustments. Coach, what's been the biggest difference in Austin Pope this year and how important is he and has he been to your run game as well as protection with, with your young offensive tackles out there? You know, Austin has kind of quietly uh, – done his job he's played we felt like he's played really well through three games uh we got to continue to get that product productivity out of him um you know he's a guy that again that he's been in the program now for two years he kind of knows the expectations and he's willing and uh, we just got to continue to get the same type of production Coach, can you comment on the on the kicking game and how they've performed so far, particularly Brent Samaglia, seven for seven on field goals. It seems like he's really hitting the ball well. You know, Brent's done a nice job in field goals. Uh, I said it, you know, Riley Snapping and Joe Holden, they those three together have done a really nice job. You know, Paxton, except for kicking it out of bounds the other day, he's had a touchback on every kick. Um, you know, and and Joe's punted. Uh, every time except for one Paxton punted one other day so um, you know we we the guys have executed that very well there we've got to continue to do that uh, because the guys back there receiving the balls uh, as the teams that we play here uh, are more and more capable of putting points on the scoreboard last couple Steve and Wes you're entering a stretch for your punt four games, three of them are against top 10 teams. And it seems like when you're in the SEC, you're going to have these types of stretches every year, like a four game stretch, five game stretch where you're playing a bunch of ranked teams. In your experience, how are you able to kind of deal with that when you're going through that week to week grind? And what's kind of the secret in being effective and not wearing down when you're going through one of these kinds of stretches? Yeah, you just worry about the team that you play. You're not playing all four of them at one time. We're playing Florida this week. We'll focus on Florida um, and then whoever's after that. I know football can be kind of a copycat game, and a lot of people kind of try to do the same stuff that, that Dan and those guys do on, on offense. Uh, but is there anything that kind of makes what they do different over the years? Has it just been the execution of the players, maybe some talent they've had, or are there wrinkles kind of in what they do with that, with that package? You're talking about when they were at Mississippi State yes. compared to now? Yeah. I think Dan just he, – he does what all good football coaches do. He – he figures out what he's got. Uh, he's he's done it a little bit differently over the last ten years each year, you know. So, um, you know, and, and to me that that's what a good football coach does. He figures out who his playmakers are, what's the best part of his offensive team, uh, and he focuses on that. And um, you know, they they continue to do that. Thank you.